and I thought I would quickly just take five minutes just to explain to you all have a little chat about what we are up to today where we're going what we're doing where where we're going I've already said that but yeah basically just what the plan is for the day so we are off to Felbridge today which is a new venue for us so we're going to do some dressage it was supposed to be some jumping and dressage but I completely underestimated how busy the dressage classes would be and our novice test isn't until quarter to five and the jumping was at lunchtime so I thought there's no way I'm going to wait around all day just to do that so we've sacked off the jumping and we have managed to sneak in a last minute entry to the prelim um I wouldn't usually do prelim unaffiliated but I'm kind of going with the fact that this will be our only second test in about 10 months so we are both very rusty when it comes to tests so I think we will let this one slide this time. The plan now is just to get him ready. I've given myself ample time. I've got just over three hours before we need to leave, which is obviously loads of time, but I really enjoy the getting ready process. I think that's one of my favorite things about going competing. So today I'm gonna take my time and yeah, just enjoy it. Normally I'm running around like a crazy person. I mean, I imagine that will still occur, but yeah. My favourite part about it all means I've got to sort the show basket out. As in, I've already sorted this out and I've popped all our products in here. I will quickly run you through what we bring. Um, so first up, we've got some oil. I use this to add to his face, muzzle, dark knees, just basically anywhere that I want to look super sparkly. We've got some mane and tail spray, self-explanatory. Um... We have some fly balm. So this is, uh, obviously, it's a fly spray in a balm. So perfect for faces. I've got some hoof balm. Um, even though you can't see his feet, I know whether his feet have been painted or not. So I still like to make an effort with this. It's just natural. It's just clear. Nothing, nothing too OTT. We've got some um, sun cream for his pink nose. I don't think we'll be needing that today, though. Uh, we have some Dazzle. This is what I pop in his plait just to make it look super shiny and super sparkly. I've got some hairspray to keep any, any loose flyaway hairs away. And my favourite, we will need this today, this is my favourite stain remover. It is literally a bath and a bottle and I think that's it. So obviously polos, can't forget those. And then there's some cloths which I use to apply the oil and the rest of it is just little bits and bobs. We obviously bring his brushes along too, like his main grooming kit, but having this just means I know that if I need to grab something last minute, I know exactly where it is. It has been pretty windy here the past few days. Um, yesterday was really bad and I was kind of a bit concerned whether we were actually going to be able to go because obviously towing a trailer in the wind is not ideal. Thankfully, it has calmed down today. Um, it's what I'd call perfect feather, mane and tail drying wind. It means I don't need to bring out the hairdryer and dry it manually. It'll just dry nicely, hopefully, in the wind. And it's sunny as well, so it's not too bad. Tell it's windy. Um, that bucket was supposed to be in that field. Oh, there's two actually. One and two. So yeah, you know it's windy when these guys have blown out. Now, Mara's treating herself to a Sunday morning lion. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did we wake you up? Oh, it's a good job you're not coming to dressage, isn't it? Oh, Mara. Morning, girl. Just thank goodness I'm not going. I did give him a quick pre wash the other day, and remarkably, he has stayed pretty clean. I'm chuffed with that. Um, I'm not going to touch his mane. Because if I wash that again, I'll never get a plait in. It will just fall out. But yay! Remy, what a good boy. So I have to bring them both in because Remy is pathetic and will not stand in a stable by himself. So Mara, bless her, she comes in for a bit of moral support. Um, yeah, he just gets anxious, don't you, Rem? Uh, but what are you going to do? He's an anxious boy. He's a warrior. Rem doesn't get breakfast usually, but... Gonna give you some today, just to give your energy levels up. 
um, he doesn't really eat hay in the trailer or when we're out. So at least I know had, he's had something. A, eh? God, he has a pick away. We can most definitely work with that. His body doesn't even look too bad. I didn't even touch that. But his legs were well, looking cleaner than they were come Friday. That's an interesting way to eat your hay net. Do need to tackle that face though. Ugh, grim. Of course, we are kicking things off with our go-to, our Honest Riders shampoo bar. It's safely tucked in its little bag and ready to attack. You better turn up. You better be there when I shake. Watch me rocking if I can't stop. If I should fall, just go ahead. Go and catch me, baby. thing about the bar is it is super easy to hold and the bag that it's in provides a really good scrubbing tool so you can get right down to those nitty gritty parts and it's brilliant on things like hocks um give that a good scrub i said that when we go out to competitions kelly could cut off his tash and she's armed with her scissors ready to snip it off Oh, oh no. No, I don't want to be reminded. It's so long. Yeah. Make sure you do a good job, smart. <laughs> that bit up. Oh, Ren. How upsetting. I think he's quite enjoying it. A man, a real man's got a tash. I think we are just about ready to hit the road, aren't we, Rem? Yeah, you excited? Good boy. We have arrived. It is very windy here. Um, but he's being a good boy after what I said about him not eating at shows. He's just tucking into his hay net, aren't you? Being a good pony. Mm -hmm. I have had to redo his plait though, but I'm impressed with that. Obviously, it's ten times harder when you've got a, a gap, but I think that looks good. So aims for the day, two nice tests, hopefully, but mainly just some half decent test riding from me. Half the time I just leave him to his own devices and just kind of let him get on with it and don't correct anything. I don't prepare enough. So I want to be more prepared and just help him out in the best way possible. So that is the plan for today. Anything else is a bonus. Remy would do his nut if we did that. What if we um... took Mara away and left him tied to the trailer? <gasps> <laughs> either Remy would undo himself to the trailer or the trailer would hitch the. Or he'd just take the trailer with him. Have I got any whiskey bits? <laughs> um, you got a bit like the end bit hanging out up the top. Where? There. That's better. That yes. Got my stirrups today one whole longer than they normally are. Kelly says it makes me look better, like a better dressage rider, or a proper one at least. We're kind of winging it, aren't we, Rem? Hmm. I suppose isn't anyone. Yeah. He's snoozing. Yeah. Gotta go in a minute, boy. So now's not the time for a picnic. Is that, mm. It looks clean though. Even if I do say so myself. Well, it looks clean on the camera. I thought it might be quite fun to try something new, and I thought I'd give you a little insight into 
how I warm Remy up for a dressage test. Unless he is feeling particularly fresh or spooky, I just kick things off in walk. I let him take in his environment. Remy used to really struggle in warm ups, he used to find them quite overwhelming. So I find this stage very important for him. The same in the trot, I'm not asking for anything too much. I'm kind of just letting him just take it all in really. Warming up on grass for a dressage test that's held on a surface isn't typical, but riding in indoor arenas, which is what this venue had, was still currently banned on this date. So the huge grass arena it was, which is perfect because there's plenty of space. And then it's exactly the same on the other rain. I am still asking him to work. I'm just not asking too much from him at this stage. Just letting him find his feet. Obviously, every horse is different, but I find if I were to come out all guns blazing and really get after him straight off the bat, he would just he would just have a complete meltdown. So calm and steady it is. And then, yeah, pop up into canter. Again, exactly the same thing. Nothing too much. Kind of just let him amble along. Just get his body and his muscles all warmed up, really. And I would do exactly the same on the other rein, too. I don't think I show that here. Once he feels all warmed up, both physically and mentally, it's time to start asking a little more from him. So I've picked him up and I've popped him onto a circle. And here I'm just encouraging him to bend around my inside leg. By keeping it simple and sticking to the circle, it's a really good way of kind of following the line that you want to follow. So making sure that he is bending through his entire body and not just his neck. We repeat the exercise on both reins. Obviously, he's not as supple this way, and you will see because he falls out through his right shoulder. He just finds it a lot harder. Another good one for suppleness is spiralling in and out on a circle and then some shoulder in as well. As we move up into trot, I stay on the circle and do exactly the same thing. The aim is to encourage him to bend through the rib cage and not just his neck. I ask for a bit of inside bend and then I kind of think of it as like I'm pushing his quarters round the circle, so slightly out. It's more of a, a thinking thing than an actual doing thing. Again, same thing in the canter, slightly bigger circle because obviously it's a bit harder in canter. It's not just the positioning of Remy I think about, I think about my own positioning so that I am in the best possible place to help him out. Mid warm up, I'd like to offer him a little walk break just to allow time for him to collect and gather our thoughts before picking him back up again. And then I would move on usually to transition. So I do like walk to trot, trot to walk, trot to halt, and transitions within the pace as well, just to make sure he's nice and in front of my leg and off my aids. Going back to suppleness, another exercise I like to do is lots of changes of direction and quite quickly. So I do small circles like half 10 metre circles or I'd serpentine around the arena. Obviously, you've got to be fairly careful and watch out for the other competitors, but basically just use every space that you've possibly got. Typically, I would allow 25 to 30 minutes for warming up, sometimes less if we've got two tests that day. I would maybe just do around 20 minutes. Obviously, we need to conserve energy for our second test, which ironically is normally the harder test and normally takes a little bit more out of him. So yeah, uh, today I think we, we did it for around 25 minutes. And voila, we are ready to go. Eek. Oh gosh.
Yeah, and he was a good boy in both, weren't you? There were some glaringly obvious mistakes, like a few breaks in canter twice. Um, but overall, were you pleased with him? Yeah. yeah? Second one was better than the first one. So yeah, good boy. He did nothing wrong, I just need to learn to ride better. Do you want to have a look at your sheet? He doesn't want to read it. So here we go. Started off okay. A few sevens, but then it just gets worse. 6.5, we got a 4.5 for when he broke, which that's quite harsh because I did pick it up again. Um, and that is the end comment. Smart little horse just needs to work with more, the wind is just not helping, with a more supple back to allow hind quarters through to carry and lighter the forehand. That's fair enough. I do think 6.5 is a little bit harsh for his rhythm. Bearing in mind, that's his forte. You've been a good boy though, haven't you? Just eating your hay. <laughs> Rem, you can't, you're vegetarian, isn't he? Oh, if I give you a little bit of lettuce, would that be nice? He's got mayonnaise on his nose. <laughs> it's bad when you have to share your food with him anyway, isn't it? Oh my goodness. He's going for the packet, quickly. It's like now I'm going to take it out your hand. I'm going to eat you. Um, probably not. Remy will oh, just eat. Like tomato. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> Want a bit of bread to wash him up? Why don't you eat some hay? She says, no, that's not as good. So it's gone off it now. <laughs> There's nothing like invading your personal space, is there? <laughs> Remy doesn't have any. Two meters. I'm sorry. Like, uh, one no. now, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> he's got no manners. I hope he's got to eat the cutting bird. <laughs> eat your hay. Oh yeah, okay, I'll eat my hay. It is actually a few days later now. It's still windy. Um, the wind's not died down. But I never rounded things off when we left Fellbridge. Um, it ended up being so late. It turned out to be afternoon dressage and then into evening dressage. I think by the time I actually got home, it was half past eight in the evening. So <laughs> two dressage tests ended up being such a long day. So the first test was prelim 14, which I showed you at the show. I think the final score was 65.14%, but I will correct myself here if I am wrong. Uh, yeah, I was pleased with it. It started out well, started off with sevens for like our entry and then I think it's the first circle. It did get progressively worse. That seven dropped down to sixes kind of throughout. And obviously we've got a four for our breaking canter. Um, I think I said at the show that, that was a little harsh, but I guess that's fair, isn't it? It wasn't satisfactory. So they couldn't really score any higher than that. So overall, yeah, I was pleased with that. I don't think I rode that one as well as I could have done. So therefore, when we moved on to the next test, which was novice 28, I gave myself a bit of a kick up the bum in the warm up and wanted to try and achieve that aim of riding a test as best possible as I could. So I rode down the centre line really positively, really determined, and I thought, right, we're gonna nail this one. Um, and I was really, really pleased with that. Overall, there was a few mistakes. Again, we broke in the canter, but it was when we were riding a 15, half 15 meter circle into counter canter. And I haven't been working on that at all with him. So it's no surprise there. Um, but I was gutted, absolutely gutted when I saw the, um, the sheet. It was pretty much the sixes across the board. Um, and I just, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think the final score, if I haven't already said it, was 62.1%, which basically popped us into last place. But hey ho, it was our first time out in, in obviously forever. And I was really pleased with him. As someone once said to me, not every victory shows up on the scoreboard. And I came away from that show probably the happiest I've ever felt like with him and our performance in, in a long time. And that is including the times when we've done a lot better. So yeah, I was, I was really, really pleased with him. So it was a good day even though it doesn't say that on paper. It wasn't all doom and gloom that day because the 28th is also Dressage Riders Online results day. As you'll know, if you watched our previous vlog, Remy and I, we rode through BE106 this month. I was really happy with the test, so therefore I was really keen to see the feedback, but when I got the email, I was overjoyed to find out that we'd scored 73 points. 
exciting, I can't quite remember, but over 73% and we actually won the class, he came first. Um, so I was really, really happy with that and so pleased with him. I did think it was a really good test, probably one of the best we've done in a long time, but still, to get a score like that and some lovely comments and lots of ways to improve and make it better was, yeah, it was just icing on the cake of a very good day. So until next time, we'll catch up with you then. Bye. What do we do to love? What do we do to love? What do we do to love? When everything's said and done, what do we do to love?